Here we go again. Holland striker Brian Brobby is the latest Ajax old boy Eric Ten Hag wants to be reunited with at Manchester United. Among United's many problems is scoring goals, and Marcus Rashford, Rasmus Hoyland, and Anthony Marshall have just 13 goals between them. Rashford has 4 in 26 games, Hojland 7 in 25, and Marshall 2 in 19. United clearly need another goal scorer, and Ten Hag wants the 21-year-old Brobby, who has netted 14 times for Ajax this season. United also like Everton's young centre-half Jared Branthwaite, and he is earning rave reviews for his performances this season. But the days of Ten Hag picking his transfer targets are at an end, and United, with new minority shareholder Sir Jim Ratcliffe in charge of football operations, are changing fast. Ten Hag's transfers have clearly not worked, and Hodgland, Anthony, Lisandro Martinez, and Andre Onana have failed to live up to their expensive price tags. Ratcliffe wants a new transfer committee and all deals to tie into the club's philosophy. He wants transfers to be ratified by a panel of himself, board member Sir Dave Brailsford, new CEO Omar Barada, their new sporting director and Ten Hag. Ratcliffe wants United to adopt a more jointed-up approach after the wilderness years since Sir Alex Ferguson left in 2013. United have won just one Europa League U, one FA Cup and two Carabao Cups since then, despite their massive outlay, and Ratcliffe wants to end this wastefulness. Signing players is further complicated by Ten Hag's position, and with United set to miss out on Champions League of football, the Dutchman is rapidly becoming little more than a caretaker manager. United know there is little point in sacking him now, despite their awful season, where they are highly unlikely to get who they want in January. They could appoint a caretaker until the summer and make a permanent appointment then, but they are still scarred by wreck -It Ralph Rangnick's terrible six months in charge between December 2021 and May 2022, when the club hit a new low. Unless United's fortunes dip even further, Ten Hag is likely to remain in charge until the summer when Ratcliffe can appoint who he feels can take the club forward. All this means they are pretty hamstrung in January, when they could begin to make the changes they want, and the picture is further complicated by money. Like many clubs, United only really have the budget for loans this month. This seriously restricts the caliber of player they want, and instead, they have had to focus on getting rid of the likes of Jaden Sancho and Donny van de Beek on loan. They have much work to do, and in addition to adding some much-needed firepower to their attack, they need a new midfield. Casemiro, who turns 32 next month, is expected to leave in the summer, and Bruno Fernandes continues to disappoint and frustrate. Scott McTominay sums up their struggles in midfield, and the Scotland International is their joint second top scorer, with six after United were ready to let him go in the summer. McTominay would not have been a regular in any of Fergie's great sides. United need a Liverpool-style midfield revamp, and the question is, can Ratcliffe deliver, again and again? It is reported that, Manchester United want to tie Scott McTominay down to a new long-term deal at Old Trafford, according to The Sun. Despite Eric Ten Hag previously being keen to move on the Scotsman, United are now aiming to keep him at the club with the midfielder winning over his boss. McTominay's current contract expires next summer, meaning the Red Devils are running out of time to receive a substantial fee for him. If the 27-year-old is to be considered a key player, he will be happy to sign a new deal, However, if that's not the case, there is no guarantee that he will accept. Meanwhile, Antony has been linked to a move away from Manchester United this month after struggling so far this season. However, his agent Junior Pedroso has insisted that United haven't suggested that they want to get rid of him. Manchester has so far not communicated any interest in transferring him in either the January or summer window, Pedroso told United in focus. Antony is focused on these four months of the season so he can improve his performance, knowing that he needs to score goals and assists. This is his focus. Today our head is on Manchester United. He knows very well that he needs to score. There's no point in just playing good games. He has to score goals and provide assists. On the other side, he is very coherent about this. He will come back different. His head has become a little key, and certainly in these four months, he will show much more than he showed this season. Elsewhere, 
Mason Greenwood is set to be one of a list of players who are set to be sold by Manchester United as Sir Jim Ratcliffe looks to kick off his overhaul of the club. Along with transforming the Premier League giants off the pitch, the British billionaire is planning wholesale changes to the squad and wants to cash in on a host of unwanted stars. Greenwood could be one of United's biggest sales, with the 22-year-old striker impressing during his loan spell at Getafe, with other La Liga clubs, including Barcelona, according to reports, keeping tabs on him. Atletico Madrid and Valencia have also been linked with an interest in the United Academy graduate, who the club said will not play for them again after an internal investigation into the player after charges of attempted rape were dropped. But Greenwood isn't the only young player United could offload, with Hannibal Mabry and Alvaro Fernandez others who could leave. According to the Eye, Ratcliffe is hoping to raise around 100 millions of pounds from player sales from their academy alone, a fee which could rise to beyond 200 millions of pounds with Aaron Juan Bissaka, Casemiro, Jadon Sancho and Antony also possible outgoings. Again and again. The appointment of a football-focused chief executive is a change of approach from United under the minority ownership of Ineos, and a signal that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is serious about his ambition to return the club to the top of the game. But Guardiola insists it will take more than poaching one key executive from City to achieve that. Meanwhile, United have reportedly been eyeing a move for Palace winger Olise for weeks now, but a deal is yet to materialize. Despite scoring five goals and bagging an assist in just nine Premier League matches this season, much of which has been curtailed by a hamstring injury, former Red Devils forward Berbatov is wary of his old employers trying to recruit the 22-year-old. The Bulgarian questioned if the France under-21 international would be the right fit at Old Trafford and recalled the time when Wilfried Zaha swapped the Eagles for United back in 2013 in a move that didn't work out. Berbatov said that, Man United have to be careful with transfers, and seeing the link to Mikhail Olis made me think about when they signed Wilf Zaha. Zaha came from Crystal Palace too, and his spell at Man United was short-lived and unsuccessful. Berbatov, who played for United between 2008-12, told Betfair, They need to make sure that Olis is what's needed at the club. Is he going to help? Is he going to elevate the team in any way? It's a sensitive situation for Man United, so they need to be careful. Olise has a lot to improve on, but he has shown great quality on the pitch in his career so far. He needs the right environment and the right manager around him, because if it's not right for him, then performances on the pitch will suffer. Olise signed a new deal at Palace until the summer of 2027 last August, but it is unlikely he will stay at Selhurst Park for all that time. United do, arguably, need a rebuild, and the former reading man, who cost Palace just eight mallers back in 2021, could be a good fit. However, many big money moves at Old Trafford have failed to work out, and it remains to be seen if the winger would be good enough to shine at a club of United's size and stature. So, what next? The January transfer window will close for English clubs at midnight on February 1st, meaning United and other teams interested in Olise do not have a great deal of time to push through a transfer. In the meantime, Olise's Palace host, Lowly Sheffield United, on January 30th.